Was a perfect September day as I climbed, fixed the barn roof as the children played. There wasn't a cloud in the skies, that big plane came passing by, but my heart sank like a rock. And I saw that smoke above the hemlocks And the silence that followed Was louder than the sound That 757 Crashing to that sacred ground Forever now known for history United Flight 93 Hey guys, you just heard uh, United Flight 93 off the Poplar and Pine album set to debut. Uh, Grim Reaper will drop on February 5th. Um, this song, anybody that was alive and can remember the day of September 11th, 2001, can tell you exactly where they were and what they were doing, who they were with. They can tell you the details, the ins and outs, the intricacies of the day itself, their routine, when they heard the news of the terrorist attacks of 9-11. Well, one day when I went to work, I'm, as I told you, I'm a professional fireman, so 9-11 holds something different. 343 firefighters lost their life on 9-11. So as a fireman uh, in that community, I wasn't a firefighter at the time. I was actually in high school the day of 9-11. I was in a biology class uh, with Ms. Cromer at Fort Defiance High School. And I came out of my first, first room class and a guy come up to me in the hallway and he said, hey, did you hear the news? And I was like, no, what news? I thought maybe there had been a fight or something in the hall. He was all excited. He said, uh, they just bombed the Pentecost. And I was like, the Pentecost? He's like, you mean the Pentagon? And he said, yeah, the Pentagon's been bombed. So I was like, no crap. So I walked to, walked to my next class. I had to go outdoors and the way our school worked, walk into the downstairs portion. And when I got to class, Miss Cromer, uh, she turned, everybody told everybody to sit down and be real reverent. And we knew something serious was going on and uh, bits and pieces had been echoed through the hallways within the, the class change. And she said, uh, class, we're not gonna do biology today. She said, I'm gonna turn the television on. And she said, you all remember the Oklahoma City bombing with Timothy McVeigh? I was like, yeah, we were in third grade when that happened. And she said, people talk about that date forever with you all, you know, you've, you've known about it. She said, from now on, you'll probably never hear about the Oklahoma City bombing again. She said, what we're going to witness, you'll remember where you were. This will be a day that goes down in history, and we're just going to watch it. I want you to sit in reverence and watch what's going on and remember where you were. And she's turned the television on, and she kind of gave us a backdrop of what had, you know, had led up to which, why she had said that. And she turned the television on in time for us to see the second plane go into the second tower. And uh, we were very reverent. We sat and we, I was a sophomore in high school, I was looking at the selective service in two years, not knowing that we would probably be in a war, not knowing what was coming, watching people fall from buildings, hearing about United Flight 93 going into the ground. And as I said before, uh, talking about the 343 firefighters that lost their lives that day, a small portion of the, the population to pass on that day. But United Flight 93 is about the flight that went down in Pennsylvania near Shanksville. And they have a memorial there now representing the, the fall and marking the tragic events of that day and memorizing how that happened. And a friend of mine, Brooke Johnson, and I were working together at the fire department. 
few few months back, middle of the summer of this year of uh, 2020, and we had done some PT. We had worked out. We were in there making some eggs for breakfast, and I was in the mindset to write a song that morning. And my grandmother had given me a pamphlet that was uh, my great grandfather Bob Dean's, and she had let me borrow it for a little bit, and. It was the story of Doris Dean. Doris Dean was lost on a mountain range near uh, Rocky Bar on the Blue Ridge Mountains in the Shenandoah Valley National Park. And she was lost for uh, five days or so during a tragic uh, uh, rain, rainstorms and uh, thunderstorms and bad weather, inclement weather. And um, she was found alive. So my grandma gave me this story. This story was from the 1930s. And actually a good friend of mine, Elston Eppert, it's his mother-in-law and uh, Miss Jane's mother, and I didn't know that there was a story already written about this. But Grandma, so I know how you like to write, you know, I thought, and I know how you love history. I thought I would give you this, and maybe it would inspire a song. So I, read, I, was, I had read the pamphlet, and in my mind, um, a lot of times while I'm working or while I'm doing something physical, mowing grass, you know, cutting wood, whatever I'm doing, hunting even, I told you uh, Poplar and Pine was written while I was in a tree stand. So... That's how my mind works. It, it, you know, I, I'll have that going in the back of my mind, singing, checking off EMS equipment, or you know, checking a, a fire engine out, or working out. I'll have something in my head, and I'll just keep it. It just builds. And I know when I'm going to write a song. It's, I guess, like an artist knows an inspiration behind a, a painting, or you know, they they can feel it. You know, it's just it's just something weird like that that happens. And I knew that I was in the mood to write the song, and. So I had started tossing some lines together in my head and, and I told my friend Brooke Johnson while we were making our eggs about this story. And just as conversation happens, we started talking about vacationing and stuff like that. It's summertime, he said, man, he loves to ride motorcycles and uh, check him out on his YouTube channel, Ride. Uh, he's a rider for Christ. He's very cool. Check out Brooke Johnson's YouTube channel. I'm a subscriber so you can look and see. Uh, give him a shout out there and uh, help his ministry on his motorcycle. But I wanted to tell you that he was talking about the vacations. So he said, man, have you ever been up to Shanksville? I rode my bike up there to the 93 Memorial. And he said, somebody that really likes history like yourself, he said, you would really appreciate uh, all the stuff that's there for the Memorial Flight 93. He said, it's really a hole in the wall town. He's like, there's nothing much around. But he said, "What, what stood out to me about that day was when I went there was the uh, witness accounts of who was where and when and much like I described my experience with being in the uh, classroom at Fort Defiance High School with Miss Cromer. I could tell you several of the people that were in there with me and he starts saying that talking about the witness accounts and he said you could pick up the telephone and hear the phone calls the cell phones calling back telling people they love them and what's going on and um, so he said man you you should really look at their website you know if you get a chance go visit it sometime it's not a far trip for us we live in Virginia so short trip you know up the road he said but you'd really appreciate it so we get showered up and have our breakfast and uh, he pulls it up on the computer real quick and says here look at some of these witness accounts he said man it's just it's odd to think you know it's a small town, much like the town I live in in Grottoes. Uh, you know, we don't even have a stoplight. And he said it was just crazy to him how, you know, somebody is doing, they're at their garage working on their roof or one guy's driving a tow truck or, you know, another person's in the yard with their children. Or, and he said they all see this plane and they all have the same story but from a different angle. And my inspiration went from Doris Dean's mountain story to United Flight 93. And he said, look at some, read some of the witness accounts when you have time. Well, my interest was pegged. So I flipped through and the first picture that, that came up was a person on a rooftop with the smoke in the background. And the first lines of this song talked about the guy who's going to fix his roof. And he, he's recounting the day of what happened. And like many of us, I wanted to capture, you know, how lonesome and just eerie it felt 
to watch and to, to live that day. So, you know, he, his, the first verse which you, you've heard says, My heart sank like a rock when I saw the smoke above the hemlocks. So the chorus says, The silence that followed is louder than the sound of that 757 as it crashed to the ground, crashed into that sacred ground. And the power in that line is really, I mean, when I wrote the, wrote the line, I was like, I sang it back to myself in my head, you know, and it, this was a slow process. This one didn't come to me as fast as I could write it. This one was, I read that account and of this guy on his roof fixing his barn. And then I read the one about a guy in a dump truck hauling coal. And, or actually, I read one about a tractor trailer driver. It wasn't a dump truck. And um, so I was reading through that, putting all that together. And when I got to that line and the silence that followed was louder than the sound of that 757 crashing to that sacred ground, it, that just set in. I felt the same feeling with that line that I felt that morning. I felt it. And I said, man, you know, that, that line moved me as a writer. And I played around with it that day some more. It kind of built, built while I was working. And I, I sang it to Brooke. He's a music guy as well. Uh, loves him some Sturgill Simpson. And, uh, you know, he's just got a, loves the cleverly. He's got an eclectic taste. So um, I sang it to him. He's like, yeah, dude, that sounds like a, a good tune. He said, you got to keep working on it, though. It ain't there yet. So the other account I was going to use, the witness account, was a guy that was driving a tractor trailer. And there was another one that was driving a tow truck. And they're all from different parts of the town at the same time. So I was going to go with the, with the tractor trailer. But I wanted you to feel like you were sitting in the cab of this truck. I wanted to feel like I was driving this dump truck. So I made it a dump truck. I said, I said well, this guy's account, I read his account. And this is not a word-by-word a -word account of these people. This is a, a portrayal. So I, I use these accounts uh, not to take away from their witness, but to amp to you know to beautify it and, and and make you feel like you you were there with them. And so I wanted you to feel like you were in that truck. And I said, well, in that part of the country, you know, that's that's steel towns and coal towns and and you know Southwest Virginia on up to Western PA and Ohio and those regions that that's steel and coal country. And I, I said, well, a dump truck hauling coal, that's pretty cool, that's a good line. So I started there, I said, I was in a dump truck hauling coal. And I said, that sounds pretty good. I said, he's hauling coal, so I, it was a Tuesday. 9-11-01's a Tuesday. So on Tuesdays I pull the tandem load. I wanted you to know what he was hauling. You, you, when you hear a dump truck hauling coal, a uh, stereotype comes in your mind. You're thinking in a, probably a middle-aged older white guy going to be driving this truck or, you know, just a middle-aged man. And uh, just kind of paints a picture, you know, of who's going to be there. And said, smell of coffee fill the air as I grabbed another gear. So you, you're painting that picture. You know, it's a September morning. He's got the window cracked. And... The smell is filling the air as he's driving. He's, it's not cold out, but it's not warm. It's getting to be that time of year where it's fall. And, and said Merle Haggard's Silver Wings played on the radio. And that was a nod to my friend Anthony Wetzel. Uh, played Silver Wings at his funeral. He died of fire-related, job-related cancer. He was a captain for Rockingham County Fire. And he was a great friend of me. And uh, I played that song at his funeral. So... I wanted, you, I wanted him to have an old country song on the radio. And Silver Wings kind of, it hit me. I said, man, what a perfect song. It's about an airplane. And, you know, and Merle Haggard's Silver Wings is just one of those iconic country ballads anyway. So that's what I put in the, I said, Merle Haggard's Silver Wings played on the radio. And I got a somber chill when I saw that plane flying low. And I sang that to Brooke, you know, the next day or so I was work piecing this together. And as the song came together, uh, I felt like I had it pretty solid and messed around with some chord progressions and I had that worked up. And 
when I went to the studio, or I'd actually talked to Kay Hill, a friend of mine, and told her that I thought maybe a second uh, person to sing the other witness account would give the song a real good feel of coming from two different places, two different voices. And um, I had reached out uh, to Shannon Slaughter about singing the, the other part, and he had agreed, and uh, logistically uh, just didn't quite work out timing-wise with us. And the opportunity arose in the meantime uh, to work with Wayne Taylor from Blue Highway, which was a phenomenal opportunity. So I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. I had an opportunity with Shannon, who I really respect and appreciate, and I, and I like his music. And uh, County Clare, I mean, he, he, puts out, he puts out good music. And I was honored that he was willing to work with me, and I had the opportunity. Wayne had, that opportunity had come up, and he said, he was willing to work with me, so I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. I had the commitment from Shannon, and I had Wayne that was, you know, he was available to work with me, and um, what what made my decision uh, easier um, was that I found out that Wayne Taylor drove a coal truck, and I said, man, that's, that's God's way of nudging me, and I... I hated the way it kind of went with Shannon, and I reached out to Shannon, and Shannon was a true gentleman, and uh, he's a he's a great guy. And I talked to him, and uh, he was he was like, "Man, you have an opportunity to work with Wayne." He's like, "You know, there's no hard feelings on this end. I you know appreciate you reaching out to me." And he was, uh, I felt horrible, but at the same time, I had I felt like that was Wayne Taylor was he drove that dump truck, and that just and I explained that to Shannon. I said, man, I felt, I said, I'm, you know, I, I believe that God, every now and then God will send you a sign on what to do. And I said, I just really felt led that Wayne was the person to sing that song. And uh, but I wanted to throw that out about Shannon. I, I hope he doesn't mind. But I wanted just to let people know the class act that Shannon Slaughter is and how much I did value um, the, his op the opportunity that he gave me. And, and how much of a gentleman he was when I approached him about my other opportunity with Wayne. And Wayne Taylor, when he got in the studio, he made this song his own. And he's featured on the second half of the track. And uh, I'm going to set to release this uh, around the 1st of August. So um, you won't be able to hear it on radio or download it on iTunes till around the 1st of August. But if you buy a hard copy now, um, I'm pre-sailing them right now. So I have a couple if you want one. Feel free to contact me on Caleb Bailey Music on Facebook or message message me on the uh, comments section of this video. But Wayne Taylor came to the studio and he's a, he's a great guy and it's the first time I got to physically meet him. Great fan of Blue Highway and he's got an iconic voice anyway. And Wayne sang this song and just put a he put a lonesome somber feel with that smooth eclectic voice he has and. Um, I was very fortunate to be able to work with him and, and honored that he would uh, let me feature him on my on my work. And um, it, I, Jason Berry started out with uh, the fiddle parts on this track and Gavin Largent put some smooth dobro chimes in. At the, at the bridge of the song talks about the memorial, if you wonder why it says, um, and the silence that follows louder than the sound was the chorus. So the bridge talks about the voices that are captured on the song of a chime. They built a tower at the memorial and that captures the fallen voices of the time. Um, they're never again gonna speak, but they talk to us through, through the wind. And that's why I put that portion in the bridge. Um, there was one point of contest in the song. I went to the studio and there was 44 people that perished in that day. And some of those were terrorists on that airplane. And when I went to the studio, I was like, well, I was gonna leave those guys out of it. I'll just account the, the, the victims of that day and I'll say they'll share one common grave. And Austin Brown, who I was fortunate to work with, uh, he was kind of of a late addition to our session, a recording session, and uh, he, he goes to Liberty University and uh, he said, uh, they're all people. And I was like, yeah, they're all people. He said, 
you say how many people share one common grave at, at, you know, at this site. He said, uh, they're people too. You might not like what they did, and you might not believe what they believe, but they're people. And I said, yeah, you're right. So I put 44 people now share one common grave. And I came back from the session, and I was thinking on that and stewing on it. Um, I'm, a, I'm an ardent patriot, and I, I love America. We're the most giving, wonderful nation on the earth. Um, we're corrupt in a lot of ways, but there's no place on earth quite like America. And, and I believe red, white, and blue. I love this country. And that, you know, 9-11, it meant something different to me. You know, it's, I didn't appreciate being attacked at home. Even as a 10th grader in high school, I didn't, you know, that was, still hurts me to think about it. To think about people that I'll never get to see their families again. The people that died in the war that came after it. It's not political. I'm just being um, as straightforward with you from my heart as I can be. And um, so when I got back, I was thinking on this, stewing on it a little bit. I said, you know what? This is not right. I'm going to take them back out. Like I, I can, when I go back to the studio, I'm going to change that line. I can't leave it in there. And I called my friend Richard Adams. Uh, Richard's a college guitar professor I had. And he's on probably the opposite end of the political spectrum for me. But uh, Richard's a class act. Richard's, he's a nice, humble man, educated, and he's, he's genuinely um, sincere. And I said, you know, I'm gonna call Richard because Richard's opinion will probably be different than mine, but he'll give me that opposite spectrum for me to make this decision. So I called Richard and I asked him, I left him a voicemail, and uh, while I left the voicemail, when I hung up, I was thinking on it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to leave them in there. And the reason being is, if I was ever asked why did I put them in there, or if I was ever would be confronted by someone that would listen to the song and be offended, like maybe one of the victims, why did I put them in there? They shouldn't have been in there. Then my answer would be simple. The people of United Flight 93, the victims that day, they didn't lay down and choose to be victims. They stood up. They said, let's roll. They rushed the cab. And they, they were true American patriots. They said, you're not going to take our Capitol building. You're not going to take our White House. You're not going to kill more people at the Pentagon or the Trade Centers. You're going to go down where we tell you you're going to go down. They're gonna, we will crash this plane into the ground before we let you take it anywhere else to do any more damage. Let that sit in for a second. That's real. And I said, man, that's my answer. They dictated that that plane would sit in the ground in that location. They dictated where they all laid the rest. And that was my answer. If I ever will be asked the question, is that, you know what? That, that, was, that settled in my heart that I knew that was the right answer to put in the song. And um, I know this video has been long and I knew this one would kind of be touchy, and honestly, that's why I've put it off so long. Um, I love the song. I wrote it. I know you said, well, you wrote the song. Of course you love it. Um, but that's not necessarily the case with everything I write. Uh, well, obviously, I like some more than others, but this song is different. It's special. It's It came to me in the way it was built. It kind of pieced together, and it, it laid in. It didn't... It wasn't one of those ones that knocked me out of the tree stand, putting it in my telephone, or hit me with, you know, wrote it in 10 minutes. This song was slow in coming to me. And the reverence that I have for the occasion and for the, the day made the song. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, remember, this year will be the 20th anniversary of 9-11. It's hard to believe, but it's coming around uh, this September, so... Um, I know it's been a long video and I hope I didn't bore you guys but please feel free to comment share, share on, on the site uh, like it if you like it subscribe to the channel um, I'm up to 140 I think it was 142 the last time I checked subscribers I love and appreciate you guys for, for subscribing to the channel helping me keep this dream of music alive to me um, it's, it's something I've always wanted to do and have had a knack for and this is just a a great opportunity and I wanted wanted to tell some of the stories that I had bottled up and and 
you know, through working with Gavin and Caleb and uh, Jonathan Dillon, Jason Berry, and all these guys, and, and Wayne Taylor, uh, I've had a great opportunity. And ultimately, it comes up to you guys as listeners, and you know, if you all appreciate the music and, and like it, I'm so thankful. Uh, you all dictate what gets played because you call and request, and and you're the ones that are the buying the product. And and I'm very humbled and appreciative of everybody that has liked, shared, subscribed, commented, and has done anything to make this go forward. Um, on a lighter note, or maybe not such a lighter note, on a different note, uh, we got one day to the arrival of Baby B. Tomorrow is Thursday, baby's due on Friday, 29th. And Christine is feeling, I'm feeling sorry for her, praying for her. She's in the last days now, so hopefully, hopefully we're sharing good news and I'm Got a little one here in my arms talking to you here too, before too long. But uh, only you can prevent forest fires. And y'all stay safe. I appreciate you listening. Love you. Thank you for your support.